St. Louis. My name is Christian Robinson. I am an author and illustrator of books for children. Right now I'm sitting in my making space, my art studio, which is actually the garage right behind my house. This is the place where I create pictures and make up stories, stories like the one that I'm gonna share with you today, You Matter. Uh, before I begin though, I wanna say thank you to the Higher Education Channel, the St. Louis Public Library, and Novel Neighbor Bookstore for inviting me to be here today to share with you. Um, so yeah, let's just begin. So You Matter, if we open the book open all the way to see the full jacket, we see some kids playing with the parachute. Have you ever done that before? It's a lot of fun. And if we open the book up to the end pages, that's what these are called, we see a city, but we're kind of zoomed out from above, and we see some kids playing with a parachute. Hmm, so let's go to the next page. And now we're even zoomed out even further, and we see the world, the earth, and the stars. All right, now the story begins. The small stuff, too small to see. Hmm, have you ever looked underneath a microscope before and seen teeny tiny little things, little organisms. Those who swim with the tide and those who don't. The first to go and the last, you matter. When everyone thinks you're a pest, <laughs> has anyone ever told you that you're being a pest or being annoying? Hmm, I imagine that's how mosquitoes feel all the time since they're always biting people and, and uh, buzzing in people's ears. When something is just out of reach, can you see what's out of reach? I think this uh, T-Rex just got bit by that mosquito. And look, he has little teeny tiny T-Rex arms. So it might be a little difficult for him to scratch that itch, huh? When everyone is too busy to help, you matter. I wonder why everyone's so busy. Where are they going? What are they running away from? If you fall down, have you ever fallen down before, tripped and fell? If you have to start all over again, hmm, I wonder if that's how the earth feels sometimes, always having to start all over again when things change. Even if you're really gassy, <laughs> you matter. You know, the sun is actually a big ball of gas burning billions of miles away. Um, yeah, millions of miles away? I'm actually not sure, I'll have to check. <laughs> Sometimes home is far away. Hmm, we see this astronaut and she's looking down at the earth, her home. And she has something in her hand. Can you see what it is? Maybe a photo of someone she cares about? Sometimes someone you love says goodbye. Has that ever happened to you before? Has someone you loved said goodbye, had to leave for a little while or longer? Yeah. I wonder who it could be though. Who is missing somebody that's far away? Maybe the boy with the rocket ship. Maybe the girl on the phone. Maybe the two cats or the parrot. Sometimes you feel lost and alone, but you matter. Have you ever felt that way before in a big city that's all busy and noisy and yeah, it's easy to feel alone in such a big place. Old and young, The first to go and the last. The small stuff, too small to see. You matter. And uh, that is the story. And now we're back where we began, above the city, looking down at those kids with the parachute. All right, so, uh, maybe I'll just share a little bit about what inspired this book. 
Um, so I, I just love to draw and make up pictures and tell stories. And this is actually the first book that I kind of wrote and illustrated. Well, I say kind of because I've, I've authored another book before this called Another, actually. But this is the first book I created that actually has words in it. So it feels like I get to really say I'm an author this time. Um, but the reason why I wrote this book um, is because I feel like um, it's so important for us all to hear that, to hear those words that we matter. I think we're living in a time right now where we're recognizing more than ever that not everyone receives that message or is treated as if they or their life matters. Um, and I just wanted to put a book out there that uh, let people know that it does. Um, let them know that it might not matter also for the reasons that you think. You know, you don't matter just because of how big and important you are. You don't matter just because how good your grades are or, you know, how many trophies you won. You matter simply because you're here. You matter because you exist. And I kind of just wanted to put that in a book. Um, uh, yeah, so I love to draw and make pictures when I'm illustrating a book. Since illustrating a book can be kind of overwhelming and intimidating, I like to start small. Um, so here with me, I actually have the original kind of sketches that I was using when I was making up this story. And you see, I start really small. I work on these little post-it notes. These are little sticky notes. Um, and I do this because I make a lot of mistakes when I draw. If anyone out there likes to draw, have you ever drawn something and you think, oh, this is a terrible drawing, I wanna throw it away? Well, guess what? Even me, an illustrator and author, I make so many bad drawings that I don't like and I'm constantly throwing them away and constantly trying things over and over again until I get it right or until I'm happy with what I've made. So starting small helps me because I can toss out my mistakes more easily. And you can kind of see it's the same story we just read, all the little drawings. When I work small, I'm also not thinking about all my different colors and what materials to use. I'm just kind of keeping it more simple and figuring out the best way to, to share an idea, to communicate uh, what I'm thinking. Um, so then I start to make the, make the actual artwork. Um, and here is actually a, an original piece from the book. This is actually the art that we see on the cover. This is those kids playing with the parachute. I love to work out with, work with uh, paper cutout and collage. So I use a lot of paper that I paint. And I also cut out little pieces and I glue things down and I paint them. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, speaking of drawing and making things, would you all like to draw and make something with me? <laughs> yes? Okay. So go grab your pencil, paper, pen, whatever you have available. I am going to use this big chalkboard. Uh, actually, it's a small chalkboard, huh? Um, and I'm gonna, we're gonna draw something together. All right, I'm gonna show you how I draw the T-Rex that you see, that we saw in, that, in, the, in the book. All right, so our T-Rex is gonna, we're gonna begin by drawing kind of like a little lump shape and then that shape. All right, you following, following so far? And our T-Rex is gonna have uh, some eyes. Let's give it two little dot eyes. And we're gonna draw a triangle kind of inside that shape. And this is gonna be where our teeth go. And then teeth are kind of like a bunch of more little triangles, sharp T-Rex teeth. Uh, and then we're gonna draw, let's do the back of the T-Rex. So we're just gonna go all the way down. Whoop! And then we're gonna draw the tail and bring it all the way back up, kind of like that. And now we get to draw, let's do the little T-Rex hands. Those teeny tiny hands that could barely scratch that bump. And let's give it big, stompy T-Rex feet. Oh, that toe is a little funny, huh? Uh, that's okay, it happens. And then here's another foot. And I think we did it. I think we created a T-Rex. <laughs> All right, well, I hope that was fun for you as it was for me. Um, and lastly, I just wanna say thank you all. Thank you all for joining me today uh, and for a story. And uh, thank you again for, to the Novel Neighbor Bookstore 
for helping put this together. And uh, yeah, keep creating, keep drawing, keep telling stories. And if you haven't heard it from anyone else today, you matter. All right, bye. <laughs>